Welcome to the Film of Steins, the podcast where we discuss all things movies. Join us as we dive deep into the latest releases, revisit classic films, and explore the art of cinema. Whether you're a film fanatic or just love a good flick, we've got you covered. From Hollywood blockbusters to indie gems, we'll be breaking down the storytelling, the cinematography, and everything in between. So grab some popcorn and sit back and get ready for some cinematic magic. If you like what you hear, please consider subscribing to our Patreon at patreon.com slash film We offer tiers at the $1, $5, and $20 level, where the $5 tier will grant the ability to request films for future episodes. This is the Film of Stein, where movies are more than just entertainment, they're an experience. They're an experience. All around. And welcome back to another episode of the Film of Steins. Thanks for tuning in to this 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 episode. This is going to be an episode. I am joined today by my scrappy friend, Lucy. How are you? Hello, everyone. Doing uh, okay today. Okay. Okay is pretty good for today's standards. I like to hear that. Excuse me. I'm content. That's even better. That's what my therapist told me to replace okay with. Well, we definitely need therapy after this film. <laughs> For sure. <clears throat> you can join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for brand new episodes of the Film of Steins. Thanks for tuning in today, you guys. I cannot thank you guys enough. Some of our most previous episodes include our Patreon-exclusive ranking of M. Night Shyamalan's filmography. Go listen to it. A very excellent talk, two-hour talk. Our talk on The Last Voyage of the Demeter, The Visit, Troll Hunter, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem film. And the new great indie film, Talk to Me. But today we are discussing a very interesting film. And this intro will probably be longer than the actual talk because this movie is really not worth your time. And this specific episode may save you some time. So we're going to try to keep it nice and short here today. Unlike this abomination of a film... Today we are talking about the just plain terrible film, Strays. It's, I want to say it's, so I just want to say off the top, this film has got way too high of scores. What are the scores? It's, I don't know, they're floating around the mid mark, and that's just not, that's just not right. I, I don't get it. This film is very easily, I think, the worst film to come out this year. I'm not sure. Maybe that we've watched, period, this year. I'm not sure about that. I have to go back and check, but... Worse than Teenage Kraken? Yes. Yes, this film is much worse than Teenage Kraken in every conceivable way. Unbelievably bad, this film. Yeah, I I completely agree with you. You talk to me about... why Just a little bit, man. We gotta... We're gonna save you some time right now. Please, please... Do not go see this film. Do not spend any money. Do not even bootleg it. It is not worth your time. Don't waste your time. Just don't waste your time like I wasted my time. (laughs) Give me some thoughts. It was just the beginning was just the beginning was awful. And maybe not in a sense of how it was shot or anything like that. But just how terrible of a human being this person is. You know, it, it just it just did not make me comfortable with the, I mean, the abuse here, the, I mean, borderline animal abuse, you know, he didn't, he didn't, you know, hit this dog, I don't think, and if he did, I don't remember, but he was just such a awful human being that, you know, I, I get, I get the grumpy pants, you know, we have a lot of grumpy pants in a lot of films, completely get that. But this dude was just the worst human being on this planet. And that right there was just was just bad. You didn't you I the the setup was not there for you to make this human so awful. What? You don't think it was worth the revenge tale? No, not at all. Maybe if it would have been a decent revenge tale, maybe, but even then, I don't think it was worth it. And I don't know, it just wasn't the greatest setup for me. Maybe it's not my type of humor, and that right there just yeah. immediately gave me a bad taste in my mouth. But then it maybe could have gotten better, but it definitely didn't. The jokes were just awful. They were awful jokes. Yep, dogs like humping things. I don't know. Dogs like humping things. It's pretty much the the through line through. Yep. A <laughs> lot of cussing. 
Dogs are oblivious. Dogs like humping things. Humans are the worst at quickly replacing their dogs and abusing them. And dogs biting, you know, some men, private parts. Hilarious. Funny. This is comedy. Yeah, this is the kind of movie that the kind of the researcher, the analysis side of me wants to sit in a room with a person or a group of folks who find this film entertaining slash funny. Just to kind of get some kind of proxy contact, you know, uh, sense of feeling out of that. Just, to, you know, and, and gather all the data I can, you know. Yeah, that's very... um scientific of you because the last thing i want to do is be in a room with anybody that even finds this movie remotely entertaining if you like this movie and you laughed this was a laugh out loud movie to you i would just i mean what's wrong with you (laughs) that simple (laughs) i almost feel obliged to bring them onto the podcast and ask them tell me why what's what is what strikes you in this movie yeah, I found this movie embarrassing to watch. I read a review that was pretty funny, and I thought it was almost perfect on just the commentary for this film. And it was this lady, and she said, Strays feels like it was written by a middle school boy with serious abandonment issues and an unhealthy relationship with his border collie. I thought it was hilarious because. It, it. I mean, the the jokes are there. the The humping jokes are non-stop throughout the whole movie. And yes, I guess there's this almost B plot with saving a little girl, and that little girl ends up adopting one of the dogs. And okay, maybe in a different film that could have worked, that could have been relatively cute, maybe. But it just, it just wasn't there for me since the start. And it it didn't hook me back in. Like, you know, the last voyage of the Demeter. I wasn't there for the start, but then it quickly very, like, what is that, 180? Mm-hmm, yeah. It 180'd for me, and we were good. But this, this, this didn't, this didn't even circle me. I don't know, to keep that reference. <laughs> it did absolutely nothing. You weren't even me. on the same circle. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> No, I feel you, and I want to like movies when they are a little offbeat, you know, and not your normal commercial fare. I really try to give them the, well, college try and keep my mind open, but this film is the kind of movie that makes me reflect and think, you know, maybe I don't like movies. (laughs) I question your film liking. (laughs) You film faith. (laughs) <laughs> good job josh how do you say that last name green bomb good job making people question their love of film love of art it's a silly thing but it's it's kind of a funny level of failure i guess on you know it's i'm sure a lot of people love this movie but it it kind of had the reverse effect on me that a really effective movie would have right movie that makes me kind of reevaluate x y and z or you know kind of change my perspective on something or give me new perspective or just introduce me to a life that i never could have imagined right but this is kind of <laughs> has done the reverse and it's a, a very, kind of an interesting case study in that and that from that angle i think yeah i don't know how many times we have to say it and i mean i'll keep repeating myself i don't really mind but just comedy is oh, yeah. the worst. I mean, we need to have better comedy movies out there. And it's almost like if it's good comedy, it's not comedy. It's something else. Like, what did we watch recently that we thought it was pretty funny? Yeah, The Visit's, I guess, like... Kind of a comedy. The Visit's definitely sort of a comedy, comedy adjacent. And I guess they call that kind of thing, like, black comedy. Yeah, so we watched The Visit and... That's more of our type of comedy than whatever this is pretending to be, because it's not funny. Yeah, I guess black comedy. I, I mean, it's true because black comedy is 
finding humor in distressful and just stressful situations. Well, I was just stressed. <laughs> no funny business in this stressful situation. I felt uncomfortable. And the way that you are, you know, at school, you know, after hours or something, you're hanging out with a group of people, a party or something, and you're talking to someone who is just not on the same wavelength as you, all right? Not in a lesser or superior way, but just totally out of check with any kind of vibes that you, you're kind of emitting, right? And you just need to get the fuck away from it and you but you can't you're kind of socially tied to the situation so you can't you don't want to be rude of course you know no one wants to be totally rude unless you're from new york but it just it's just the kind of situation that just feels like an eternity when you're when you're in when you're in it and you know those kind of people when they walk away when you walk away when the party's over or whatever you take a second and you're like am i it's kind of a similar situation with the literal movie you start to question who you are and like am I the kind of person to attract that person you know what I mean and so is that kind of a very similar feeling going on here for me where if I'm not careful if this if I wasn't watching movies at the clip I am today or if I wasn't interested and knew the possibilities of you know the David Lynch's Stanley Kubrick's Park Park John Ooks of the world right if I didn't know these the the ceiling of cinema this is the kind of movie that would make me want to stop watching movies for a year and it's so it's just it's strange does that make sense yeah i can't relate to questioning myself because i'm only i'm already i don't know maybe i'm the rude one maybe i'm meant to go to new york and live there but i probably would have already removed myself from the situation you know you you to avoid the rudeness you fake a phone call you do what you got to do to get out of there and that's what I wanted to do with this movie. Get out of there. Stop watching this. It gave me very... Um, and I didn't even watch these movies either. I think I started them and found them very stupid and just stopped watching them. But Let me guess. Harold and Kumar. No. Ted. Oh, the, Ted. With the bear. Yeah. Yeah. I Those, those movies just weren't funny. They weren't... I don't know. Maybe I just don't have that type of humor. Whatever that type of humor is, I don't have it. Yeah, I, I don't have it either. I I don't know what that is. I thought you might say Harold and Kumar because this movie did give me Harold and Kumar vibes in that they went, they had these different kind of divergencies to, you know, to handle different little tasks and stuff and to have different experiences and, you know, just... Yeah, but I guess that's not the awful part of the movie no the awful part is the writing yes pretty much uh i will say voice acting is fine it's 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 whatever i will say my favorite part of the movie was probably when they thought they were playing with stuffed animals and they mauled a whole family of rabbits yeah that was that was uh pretty funny yeah that was decent whatever led to that was stupid what happened after that was stupid but when they woke up and thought, well, when they woke up and saw all the, you know, dead bunnies and fur and whatnot, and they realized what happened, that was pretty funny. That, I think that, that wasn't their promotional it. material, so they knew that was going to be the <laughs> the high point of the whole movie, kind of climax. That's sad. Yeah, and that... You had to show your best part as your trailer to get people to come and see your movie. You tricked them. <sighs> it happens. It certainly happens. Yeah, and the way this film was shot was no different than things like No Hard Feelings and just very commercial films. But yeah, very stupid. Do you have any final thoughts for me? <laughs> yep, just another shitty comedy. Don't go watch it. I mean, unless you like dog humping jokes. Over and over and over, over and again. over and over. Then I guess you're fine to watch this film. You know, if you're not triggered by people being super mean to dogs yeah go for it i guess but other than that if you have some taste don't go watch it yeah there are way too many much better films to go see than to waste any time on this this is total miss total waste of time i i, I cannot i can't believe this was funded <laughs> i can't believe someone wrote this and thought 
this is a good idea to make some money. And I'm I'm glad to see that a lot of people feel similar. Yeah, that it just sucks though because you have all these people that spend time and money to make this happen. And, you know, maybe taking the story aside and appreciating any of the, you know, cinematography, appreciating any of the, um, I don't know, the props, the CG, like whatever. You can't even appreciate any of that because it's so bad. It's so badly written that you you can't even analyze it. Like, you should <laughs> because... My eyes just couldn't. <laughs> yeah. I'm, My head wasn't in the game. I'm sorry I made you watch this. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you I, for I apologize for that. I should know better. I should do better. I'm going to go to therapy to help make better decisions. <laughs> and pay for my therapy. Yeah. Well, man, <laughs> do you have a budget guess for this film? I have no idea how much films are where you have dogs. VO dogs. Yeah. And those are, you know, these these are our actors besides a couple of humans here or there. So I went with 25 million. Yeah. So it says here that it was 46 million. Why? It's another one of those, how the fuck does this movie cost this much but there there was a lot of different sets and locations so that that was probably the big um yeah and i guess the house does get destroyed destroyed at the end which is fun or whatever yeah. but it's does it's, that cost money just does, does destroying things cost money sure they can't reuse the thing i guess it's wasteful yeah i don't know if it was it, yeah controlled fire or if it was all cg it's hard to know they may not yeah. have destroyed the house oh Huh. Yeah, so it's hard to say. Okay, well, how much? It's not like the Gilbert Grape house. Not Gilbert Grape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what's eating Gilbert Grape? What's yeah. eating Gilbert Grape? That's a... That's a great movie. Crazy ending. Yeah, so it made about $32.3 I think it's still at theater, so there's some hope that it can... How much? $32.3 million. So... At... If I had to guess, it's probably not going to break even. I mean, it's got to it's got to make at least almost fifteen more million to to hit the budget. Not to mention marketing and um, talent. So it uh, yeah. I mean, good riddance, I guess. Yeah. Hopefully, the crew and everyone's all happy with you know their checks because I'm sure they made a good bit of money on this because it was an expensive endeavor, no doubt. But I'm glad we will not be seeing another one of these. Yeah, sure. Go put this on your resume if you dare, I guess, and uh, have fun spending your money. Yeah, the biggest resume point, which not everyone can put on it, is working with Universal. And working so. with dogs. I wonder if... And working with dogs, yeah. yeah. Of course, yeah. That was probably pretty fun in some ways, too, and frustrating, I'm sure. But it's just... And I guess it's probably kind of fun for, like, the dog trainers and stuff to have their dogs as, like, the main characters and stuff. That's kind of cute and fun and everything, but it's so, it's, like, not even raunchy in the right ways. It's not, I just, I hate that I cannot get into this whatsoever, <laughs> but it just, it's so bad. It's so, it's unbelievably bad. I thought Teenage Kraken was bad. This, I didn't, I thought Teenage Kraken was very easily going to take the take the win for the worst movie of the year when we give our awards out i mean spoilers <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is yeah this is the same teenage kraken was at least watchable and my brain didn't feel like i lost brain cells that's, that's good yeah that's fair. Right. similar feel similar yeah well yeah well, well thank you for talking to me about this film you're welcome. Thank you guys for listening to this this episode. I'm sorry this short and sweet episode. Yeah, I'm sorry I dedicated some time to do this movie for you guys. This is I'll try not to make this mistake again. I'm gonna learn my lesson, I think. <laughs> I can't even do it. We can't even do a proper dog pile. Ah. <laughs> 
um, but yeah, thank you guys for listening to this episode. Catch us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for new episodes of the Film and Steins over on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, no longer Stitcher, rest in peace. But until next time, take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And that's a wrap for today's episode of the Film of Steins. Thanks for tuning in and joining us on our cinematic journey. We hope you enjoyed our discussion and gained some new insights and perspectives on the world of movies. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast on your favorite platform, especially Patreon at patreon.com slash filmasteins. And follow us on social media for more film-related content. We love hearing from our listeners, so if you have any feedback, suggestions, movie recommendations, or book recommendations, please feel free to reach out to us. Until next time, keep watching, keep loving the magic of movies. Except this one, this is the Film of Steins, signing off. This movie sucks.